And let's go to God in a word of prayer, and we'll go ahead and get started. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for today, for the opportunity, Father, again, to look into your word. Father, we, lived in, we live in such a blessed time that not only the freedoms that we have, the technology that we have, but the resources that we have to be able to look very uh, deeply into your word and see, Father, what your word is saying to us. Please help us, Father, in our study today of the word hope to have that hope that your Bible speaks of and not, not think of it as we use the word today, but think of it, Father, as you meant the word to be, as it was used in the first century when your, when your Bible was written. We know that you picked the words in your Bible on, uh, on purpose to be able to tell us something. Please help us, Father, to recognize what your word is telling us with this simple four-letter word. We love you, Father. We trust you. We give ourselves over to you. It's in your son's name we pray this prayer. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let me get my Facebook here adjusted. Hi. Hello, Aunt Mary. Good to have you with us. Okay. We are uh, looking at, as I said in my prayer just now, we're looking at the word hope. And that word is a very, as opposed to uh, some of the words we've been looking at during this word study, that word is a very common word in our, in our English language. The problem is, is the word has changed meaning over the years. Uh, when, the word was, when the word was translated in the, in the, in the Bible, or well, when the Greek was given, obviously, the word means a specific thing. And perhaps, perhaps uh, earlier in our, in, our, in our language's history, perhaps the word meant that as well. In, uh, in English. Whether it does or not, we know exactly what the word hope means. And the word hope is not, uh, well, let me ask you that question. How do we use the word hope today in English? Give me an example of the word hope. I hope it doesn't rain today. Yeah, there's one way we use the word hope. Now, what do we mean when we say it that way? I hope it doesn't rain today. And Julie truly does. We want to go on a bike ride later on. So, right. So, uh, <laughs> What does it mean that you hope it doesn't rain today? A wish or desire? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's like with us. We're wanting to go on a bike ride later on. So it would be greatly appreciated by us if we don't have rain. And that's our desire. Um, and, uh, but but in, if we used it as the Greek gives it and as, our, as God intended it for the Bible, this is a powerful word. Whereas that word hope is, is used like a wish. Um, but in, in, in the Bible, it's used as a much more solid idea. The word means, gives the, in, gives the idea of an earnest, an earnest expectation. So in other words, when, if, if we, Julie was to maybe change the sentence around a little bit and said, it is my hope that it will not rain later on today. Well, that, that would be her earnest expectation. She has done all the, all the looking at the, the weather forecasting and and uh, she she knows for a fact the conditions are not going to be likely or actually just the opposite are not going to happen at all that it's going to rain later on today of course that's not the situation we might very well get rain and we'll see but if, if she was to use the word the way the bible uses it it is an expectation and when it's used in the bible an earnest expectation and when it's used in the bible when it speaks about what God, about God and what God has promised us, that earnest expectation is very much uh, solid because God made a promise. For instance, Jesus Christ is coming again. That is my hope. It's not, a, it's not I, I wish it's going to happen. I know for a fact it's going to happen. Because God's word makes it clear that that is going to happen. Look at the look at First Peter chapter one verse thirteen, and see what see what it says there and how that word is used there. Okay. Um, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you. At the revelation of Jesus Christ, man, there's 
several, uh, there's a couple of, well, there's, there's a, another word there that we've been using within our, within our uh, studies, that word grace. Now that word grace, we, we, we made clear, merely means God's favor. Uh, in, in, well, in the way it's used here, it merely means favor. But it's speaking here of God's favor, okay? And God's favor, we are saved by grace through faith. Grace saves us, all right? In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 that I just quoted. Now, or part of it I just quoted. Now, now look at how that word is being used there. Put your hope completely on God's favor. That's where it belongs. God's favor is able, is, is what we need to be saved. When you're in God's favor, you are in a saved condition, as it's being used within that, within that passage. So Peter is saying uh, in verse 13, given the context he's sitting there, he, he's making it very, very clear how important it is to be, to be on with God. And so he says, therefore, prepare your minds for action. Get ready for what's coming. Keep your spirit, keep, keep sensible solid in your spirit keep sober in your spirit for your hope uh, i'm sorry fix your hope completely on the grace that brought you okay so how is fixing my earnest expectation on on grace going to help me what's he saying with that phrase if we if we consider the fact that, that god's grace is the only thing that will save us we better concentrate on that and understand what it means and it made me think of Titus 2 11 that our our hope is built on nothing but in this song that we sing in our hymnal yeah. our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness okay and at all in in first Corinthians 15 uh, 18 or 19 that that he speaks of hope if in this life only we have hope in Christ we have all men most miserable so we better concentrate on what the word tells us according to this and the other verses that we could refer to uh, without we don't need to of course but if we if we put our trust and our faith in what jesus is saying john 12 48 we better because that's our only hope yeah okay. Robert, yes ma'am uh, for me to fix my hope on the grace of christ means that um i am going to, you know, I, I am depending on or counting on his being in God's favor um, for my salvation, so I better do what I need to do to, to keep in God's good graces. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Think about that for a second. For the Christian who has promised salvation as long as he stays with God, Satan's only, let me use the word the way we use it today, Sir, Satan's only hope, his only wish, is that we don't trust God, that we fall out of trusting God. We, we are not certain of our salvation. When we are not certain of our salvation, what happens? Or what can happen when we're not certain of our salvation? We're likely going to fall. Yeah. That's the same ploy. That's the same ploy that Satan used in the Garden of Eden, getting Eve to not trust what God said. Yeah, yeah. We're likely not to fall. Exactly what 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 uh, Bob just said. We're likely likely to fall because we're not trying. We're not going to try as hard. We're not going to be certain of our next step. We are going to be. Um, um, uh, worried about whether we can do it and therefore not even try to do it satan's only hope and again i'm using that word the way we use it today his only possible way of of winning is to get us to stop trying but when we have hope like god's word is saying it when we have earnest expectation we are secure in our salvation. We are secure in standing in our salvation, no matter what the cost. And there are costs that come up. 
there are there are uh, people who will shake our faith merely perhaps by their words or by their treatment. There will be worries about whether or not I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have a job, uh, and therefore perhaps I'm worried about uh, the time I take out to to do the God's service. You see what I'm saying? We we start we start moving our um, our re, our responsibilities around our the uh, the things that are in our life around, and we don't put God perhaps on as high a level as we should. Because why should I deal with something that's not I'm not certain of when I have something here that I'm more certain of? That's a sad thing. Sometimes people can be more certain of their next paycheck than they think they can be of whether God's going to keep his promise. And that's sad because we do tend to go with what we're more certain of. If people would merely be more certain of God, they would not put him as low on their expectation list of what's going to be occurring. All right. If we know, well, let me give, let me give you this. The Bible tells us that Jesus is going to come like a thief in the night, that we don't, we're not going to know when Jesus Christ is coming. Well, let's say we did. In fact, let's say we knew that Jesus Christ, just like my phone call from the doctor, I'm expecting it around 10 o'clock to be able to talk to him here in a little bit. Let's say we knew Jesus Christ was coming at 9.59. What do you think uh, we're, is going to be on the top of our important list right now. Getting right. Exactly. Getting right with God if we're not. What else? What else besides getting right? Preparing. Preparing. Telling other people. Yeah. Telling other people when Jesus is coming. Okay, telling other people. Letting them know he's going to be here at 9.59. How about this? Nothing else. What about my phone call with the doctor at 10 o'clock? Where's that going to be? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As a phone call, as a phone call about a doctor asking me what I've been doing, probably healthy-wise, or asking me if I'm eating right, whatever that is. Oh, none, of that, none of that matters. I don't care about that phone call. What about lunch this afternoon? How's that going? Where's that rate on my list? Nowhere. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's, it's not going to happen. It's over. Life is over. Um, uh, this world is over at ten o'clock, and I start eternity with God at nine fifty nine, and I start eternity with God with at nine fifty nine. I couldn't possibly care less about lunch. You know, you oftentimes will hear about people. I couldn't. I couldn't pay attention on in during the services because I was worried about lunch, whether it was going to be ready or not when we got home, or what I was going to fix for lunch. Well, now that I know that I'm not going to be eating lunch, I couldn't possibly care less about lunch. But we will allow ourselves to get focused on minutia because of where that, man, where, where that little stuff is in our daily lives when we should be focusing more on our hope, on our earnest expectation that Jesus Christ is coming again. We'll get ready, go to the store, Start the dinner early. Make certain that nothing's nothing is going to be happening at lunchtime because I want to eat. We, we'll make all sorts of plans and decisions about lunch. And why aren't people getting ready right now if they're not ready for Jesus to come again? Why aren't they? Well, it's down there. They really must not believe. Yeah, they must not believe he's coming today. That, that, that I'm pointing a finger at myself there yeah. as I plan my day. Yeah. That earnest expectation of him coming is not as focused upon or maybe isn't really there. We need Albert? To, yes, ma'am. I seen a video where all of a sudden rays came down and people were disappearing. Okay. In a church. And the people that was left right, left looking around all of a sudden ran up to the altar to pray. It's too late. Amen. It's way, it's way too late at that point, isn't it? Way yes. Too, you know, yeah. yeah I'll be, I'll be, I like your version a little bit better. And First Peter says, prepare your minds 
the King James, I think, is a little remiss. It says "gird up." Yeah. But it, it made me think of uh, of uh, what Philippians four eight. Whatsoever things are good, pure, honest, and all of those. Think on these things. Prepare your minds. In other words, yeah. there's a preparation time, and we have it now. Now is the day yeah. of salvation. And that and that idea of preparing your minds, Bob, is that focus that we're talking about. Where yes. is my focus? Where is my focus? at you know there's nothing wrong with getting ready for lunch this afternoon or, or any you know i use that as my example or anything else that's happening today but my focus needs to be on my eternal salvation my eternal destination at all times that needs to be the most important thing to me go with me go with me and let me show you an example of that in uh in uh, i believe it was colossians is that right Wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. No, I got off. One second. Let me let me get that verse again. What in the world happened here? Sorry about that. Let me. There we go. There we go. Look at First Thessalonians. There it is. First Thessalonians one three. First Thessalonians one three. Look how this is worded in First Thessalonians one three. Uh, let's start with verse two just to get the context. We give thanks to God always for all of you, making mention of you in our prayers, constantly bearing in mind your work of faith labor, and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Father. Now tell me about that, that phrase, steadfastness of hope. Why is why is it called steadfastness of hope? Not quitting. It's always there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Not quitting, continuing on, and it's of focus. your your focus exactly. It and it comes and it's and it comes out of it's it it is it gets its power from our hope, our earnest expectation of what God is of our connection with God of Jesus Christ is coming again. Of eternal salvation is uh, eternal life is so much better than this life on this earth that that hope of it that earnest expectation is true causes the individual to be steadfast continual first, not giving first, up first, I'm sorry first 15, 58 okay what be fast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord yeah yeah be, be always abounding in the work of the Lord that's that's exactly right and, and that happens because of earnest expectation. It is something that we have that is a power. Hope, hope is a powerful thing. Okay? Um, we often, like I said, we use that phrase, well, you know what? There's really no hope. Okay? If we ever hear a doctor say that about our condition, there's really no hope. Um, he's, he is, he's using it actually in a very accurate way way you don't have an earnest expectation of of a future you know on this earth and so as far as life is concerned there is no hope but but for the hope. i know this is this is getting ridiculous what's the matter is it messing up yeah. am i locking up how about facebook is facebook seeing this okay i'm showing that i'm okay I'm not. Okay, Facebook, can you see me? Uh, hold on. All right, let me do it this way. Okay, I see Pat just waved.
Julie, I'm trying to get in. Okay, can you hear me, Zoom? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, let me do it this way. I'm not certain what's going on. I hope it I hope it stays up, but I'm using my digital on my phone. Okay. Yeah, and it's obviously a Zoom issue. We need to maybe look for an update. Oh, okay. All right. So it's so uh okay, Terry says it's okay now here. So let me go ahead and keep on yeah. going with Zoom. Okay. Yep. Now five minutes probably. Five minutes? Okay. Okay, uh, let, let's let's continue on. I've got I've, I'm really limited on my time. Okay, so so notice what we're seeing here. Then uh, that that steadfast we we have that steadfastness of hope in in Christ. It is able. It is a power that we have when we have that earnest expectation. There's nothing that's going to stop us. Quite frankly, it's a lack of hope that hurts the Christian most today. So what is going to cause a Christian to give up the most likely to cause a Christian to give up is his lack of hope. Again, not talking about what we, the way we use it too often today, but it's not having that earnest expectation. There's not too many Christians who would, who would, who would start sinning or give up on God as I said a few moments ago, if they knew that Christ was coming in three minutes. No, we would all be focused on doing God's will, on being effective for God, on being with God, if we knew that God was coming in the next few minutes. But it's that not uncertainty that develops in the Christian when he doesn't keep his focus. Albert, I'm going to be a call right now, so I need to go. Sorry. Okay, that's all right. Well, we'll tell them I'll be talking to them too soon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, talk to you later. Okay, so let me finish up with this. I know we're getting close on time. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We basically looked at what the word, what the word hope means. But I, I want us to see something about that meaning of that word hope as well. Okay, 1 Corinthians 13 is the, is the uh, passage that we normally talk about when we're wanting to talk about love, because that's what this, the chapter is all about. In fact, just before chapter 13, at the end of 12, uh, Paul tells the Corinthian church, let me show you a more excellent way. And that more excellent way is love. Okay, and, and we talk about that love. It's a giving. We've talked about it already before. This is agape love. It's a giving type of love. Is a love that we need to have for God and for mankind if we're going to be approved of by God. And, be, and with it, all of the law and the prophets hang. Every bit of, word God, of God's word hangs upon our having the proper love. If we have that proper love, we will do God's will. Okay, that's a short version of studying the word love, which we took over 40 minutes probably to do the last time we studied it. But look at the very end of the chapter. Speaking on love. Paul ends it in verse 13 this way. But now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Now notice that. We've been talking about how important, how important hope is, and it is important, extremely important. But look at the way he words it in verse 13. But now faith, hope, and love abide. All right. He was talking earlier about how spiritual gifts were going to go away. Okay. But he makes the point right now, faith, hope, and love abide. They remain. But faith and hope will not remain following the second coming of Christ. I oftentimes like to tell people there's no hope in hell, but you know what? There's no hope in heaven either. Well, once we get there, we're not going to have any hope. Now, notice what that word is saying. Earnest expectation will be gone. Why? Because you're there. You don't have to expect anything. You've already got everything. Everything is already part of your life. The only thing that will go into eternity with us, with and the same thing with faith, by the way, faith is 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 trusting something 
is going to happen. Trusting something is, is there, is going to be happening. Well, there's no faith in heaven either. Faith becomes sight, as Paul says in one of his other letters. Once faith becomes sight, there is no faith. You don't, fa you don't, you don't have faith in something you already have. It's already there. All right? Well, you don't have, you don't have hope in, for anything when you're in eternity, either side, heaven or hell. You don't have hope in eternity with God because you've already got eternity with God. You don't have hope in hell because you, you, you have nothing to expect in the, your future except for what you're getting right now, and that's not pretty in hell. So hope is something that we won't have in eternity because in eternity we will have everything we're going to get already. Okay? Okay, thank you. But love... Love continues on. That love of God, that love for God, that love for each other, that will be in eternity with God. Okay? So hope is a wonderful thing. And hope is something that we certainly do need in God's kingdom. Hope is something that the Christian needs to develop if he doesn't have it. And the way to develop it is to go to God's word, read it, and trust it. That's the only way to have an earnest expectation from God that we should have. An earnest expectation of God that we should have is to read God's word and trust it. Let's go to God in a word of prayer and we'll be closed. Tomorrow, by the way, is the, is the, is the word predestination. And I've been given a lot more words. My sister and, uh, and one or two others have given me words. So we've got more words to do. But tomorrow's predestination, or predestined. Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the hope you give us. The fact, Father, that we can, we can expect your promises to occur because you keep your promises. You, Father, are steadfast. You are faithful. Help us to always realize that the trustworthiness that we, we can know comes from you when you say you're going to do something. Father, please help us to develop that hope so that our focus will always be on you. We love you, Father. We trust you. We give ourselves over to you. It's in your son's name we pray this prayer. Amen. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it.